Okay, hey everyone. I'm super excited about tonight's Zoom. It's gonna be jam-packed. We are gonna keep it short and sweet, sweet, but lots of good stuff. As you guys know, my friend Valerie Reynolds is on here to share with you guys. Um, I know a bunch of you submitted questions, and so we are gonna just attack her with questions, and she's gonna fill us with so much good stuff, but First, I just wanted to say Val is a top 150 income earner for the second year in a row, right? Second year in a row. Um, she has a really awesome podcast that you guys should check out. I can have her um, kind of plug that in, but I think it's beautifully enough. Is that right? You can put it in the chat. Um, she's a great person to follow on social media. If you don't follow her on Instagram or Facebook, um, I always creep on her Insta stories. She is like really great at just incorporating her personal life and her kids, but also combining business and other things. So if you guys are people that have trouble posting, and I know a lot of you guys have bu busy lives, um, she would be a really good person to follow. So um, I'm going to let her just like share 30, 60 seconds of her story, and then we will go ahead and ask her some questions. So hi, friend. Hi, thank you for the intro. You're, welcome. <laughs> You're a big deal. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, well, a little bit about my story. So hi guys, I'm Val. Um, if you see me, you can go ahead and call me Val. You don't have to call me Valerie. I've been going by Val for a oh, long time, but I've been in the business for a little over four years. I am a former teacher, high school teacher, and a head volleyball coach. And I started this business because I wanted just an extra 500 to a thousand dollars a month. Um, I married to a coach. And so being a coach and then having a coach as a husband, we had crazy, insane, uh, hours and we were coaching at the same time. Our seasons were exactly the same. So our son spent a lot of time at grandma and grandpa's house and that was just life for a while. And it was, it was fine. That was my mission field kids were my mission field, you know, mentoring them was my mission field. And it, when my son was about three years old, that's when something switched inside of me. And I just, I was done. It's like, I wanted to spend more time at home. And I was looking for just an extra, like two hours a day. That's all I was looking for. I would get done with practice and pick him up by six o'clock every day. He was the last one to be picked up and teachers, they were able to leave by four. And so I was just thinking, goodness gracious, if I could leave by four to pick him up every day instead of six, like that's all I wanted was just two hours extra every day, Monday through Friday. So I would have time with him at home. And it wasn't just a mad dash to a fast food restaurant, pick up dinner, bath, bed. And then he had, and then he had to go to bed because it was late. And so that's all I was wanting. And I didn't realize that this business was going to allow me a chance to stay home until I actually said yes. And so my sponsor had reached out to me and I ignored her. And I always add that into my story because I know so many of us hate feeling rejected or we uh, hate the fact that people don't even want to tell us no thank you. But guys, I was that person. Like I didn't even take two seconds out of my day to say, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Yes, I was rude. I was the rude one, but I kept watching her. And so when I finally had a life-changing moment where I decided I needed something different, I knew exactly who to message. Like nobody on my stories, nobody, well, we'd have stories at the time, but nobody on my newsfeed was posting about social media businesses, but her. And so I knew exactly who I was going to. She was just an acquaintance and now she's my best friend. And she totally changed my life because of one message that I ignored for two months, but I knew exactly who I was going to once I decided I needed something different. And so I joined the business. I started off slow. I it took me 17 days to sign up my first customer, but I was consistent. And then the harvest happened and I promoted extremely quickly. Went double diamond in seven months, which is not typical. So don't think that I, I obviously don't want you guys to play the comparison game already thinking that you have to go double diamond in seven months to, to be super successful because you don't, but I sat there for two years at Double Diamond, but I was able to retire. I was able to come home and I've been able to do this business now full-time for three years. Um, and I've gone through the ups and I've gone through the downs. I've gone through high enrollments. I've gone through like what is going on with my enrollments. I've experienced every emotion possible with this business, but I wouldn't leave it for the whole entire world because it's changed me as a mom, as a wife, as just a woman in general. The person I am now is so much stronger and more confident than I was even when I started and I felt like I was already a confident woman four years ago. The person I am now is totally different and I walk in entirely different shoes, but I just 
this business has changed my life just both financially and, uh, and spiritually. I went triple in 2008 and then presidential last year. Um, and this business just totally changed just our entire lives. And we just, we can't go back to, I can't go back to regular nine to five. I just, I have to do this now full time. <laughs> um, I love your story because every story is so different and so unique and the peaks and valleys hit at different times and the harvest hits at different times for everyone. But it's consistency, 100%, always for everyone. There is not one su successful person on the face of the planet that did it without consistency in any industry. Um, so would you have joined Whitney if she would have just stopped posting at any point when you were ignoring her? Like, what, what would have happened then? <laughs> Probably not. I was looking for someone, so I watched her for, I think she was in the business for about eight months whenever I finally joined her team. Um, and it was one of those things that, I mean, you know, like I had followed her because I was that person that just, I was so skeptical. What the heck is she posting about? Um, but I unfollowed her once she messaged me and I was a little bit curious, like, what is she doing? I started watching her again, uh, but it was her full consistency. She was excited. I mean, y'all, so she was brand new. Like she was a Ruby when she signed me, she was not an emerald. She wasn't a diamond. She was a Ruby. And so she was a, a Ruby making $500 average a month. And that's all it took for me to say yes. And so I, 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 this may even go into some questions that I don't even know, but if you, yeah. um, if you don't have this big su success story that you think that you need to have, you feel like you need to be making four or five figures to be able to post about your story. You don't, you literally just have to have excitement, passion, show up every day. And that's all the ingredients that you need for someone like me to turn around and say, that's who I need to join because I just see her every day. And that's, what's going to make me join. I'm not going to join someone who's hot and cold, hot and cold. I'm not going to trust them, but I trusted her. I trusted her excitement. And I was like, that's where the energy is. That's where I'm going. And she was a Ruby. She went Emerald the month that I signed up and then she went diamond the next month, but I had no idea what those ranks are no idea. And so your rank doesn't matter. The person who's joining you doesn't know your rank. And frankly, they don't care. They want to join someone who's excited and passionate, who's going to take care of them. Yeah. I always say that if you're wishy-washy, people joining this business are already so nervous. If they are nervous that you are not going to help them, or if they're nervous that you're going to disappear, they're not joining with you because they're already terrified. They need to, they don't need you to know everything. They just need to know that you're going to be there. Yes, and showing exactly. up for your business is one way that you show them that. Okay, so I you were actually, like, after hearing this list of questions from, from this group, I couldn't have asked a better person to do these Zooms because, or to do this Zoom because um, you're so good with, like, mindset. And so much of the questions that you guys asked, I don't know if you realized it, but a lot of you guys asked the same questions. And a lot of them come down to mindset. Even though you think it's not a mindset thing, a lot of them is, it's a shift that needs to be made. So um, I'm gonna start with the most popular one to make sure that we kind of touch on it. And you guys said it in 10 different ways, but basically like your biggest tips for balance, which we hate that word, but like establishing a routine, how do you juggle all of it? Like husband, kids, business, all of it. Okay. So I want to first remind you that when I started this business, the, my, the first nine months of me joining, I was working full-time working 60 plus hours a week. And that's the minimum. Like if you include the track meets and how long we were there, like it was way longer than 60 hours a week, but I'm just, I say 60 because it sounds good to people. It was much, long, much more than that. So when I'm talking to you, understand that if you work full-time and you have a job that is demanding, um, where you can't be on your phone a whole lot. Like I couldn't be on my phone in the classroom. Um, I understand. And I still was able to build to double diamond in seven months while working 60 plus hours a week and while having a husband that also was working that much too. And then having my son at the same time. So I have been in the business where I am a work from home mom now, but I understand what it's like to work hard while having a full-time job. So with that being said, you need to plan. Okay. We act like we are victims when it comes to our next day and we start to feel overwhelmed with our next day. We have our to-do list, our task list. And when we hit the day, if we didn't plan out the day, then we are already setting ourselves up 
for failure for that day. We are already going to be skipping things in our to-do list. We're going to go ahead and put the non-important priorities to the back burner. And a lot of times that is our business because we have to do, we feel like we have to do all these, all of these other things. And by the time we get to our business, we are too tired. We don't have the energy anymore. We want to just go to bed instead of maybe hashing out 10, 15 messages. And that is from lack of planning. Your day tomorrow really shouldn't surprise you unless there's some sort of actual surprise that happens tomorrow, some sort of maybe accident or an emergency that happens. Tomorrow, your day shouldn't surprise you. And so if that's the case, you should be able to think about tomorrow and say, okay, here's my day. When do I have time to work? Or am I going to have to make time because my business is that important to me, because my why is that important to me. So for example, tomorrow it's rodeo day here. I'm sure you guys are from all over the United States, but I'm in Texas and it is rodeo day tomorrow, which means my husband who's a teacher is home tomorrow and my son is home tomorrow. So instead of my day on Fridays, it's just my daughter and I usually, and we have our own little routine and she will play back here while I can get work done. That's not happening tomorrow everyone's going to be home and my husband needs attention and my son needs attention. And it's just, they throw my schedule off. It actually, for, I was not happy whenever they, I found out that they are going to be home on Friday. I'm like, can you guys just go back to school? You guys are throwing off my routine, but I understand that they're going to throw off my routine tomorrow. Therefore I am planning ahead. And so I am getting my butt up at 6 AM in the morning and I'm working and my husband will let me work. He'll keep the kids out of here until at least about 8:30. By the time I start hearing screaming downstairs, I'm walking downstairs, but for, I will give myself at least two hours. So I'm waking up before everybody else gets up. I'm in this office. It's quiet. I do my journaling. I will write down all of my leads today. Um, I'll get my messages done. I'll kind of plan out some posts for the day. And I will get all of that done, but I'm just planning ahead. So whenever the chaos happens, when my husband wants to go shopping for a conference, when we're getting out of the house tomorrow, I don't have to feel guilty that I'm not working my business during the day because I already got everything done prior to. But it's just, I'm taking care of myself. I'm taking care of my day. And the same thing, I did the same thing when I was working full time, just in a little bit opposite manner. So I would get up early. I get ready. And before I got out of my car going into work, I would sit there for just a few extra minutes and get a post out before I walked through the doors. Like it just takes two minutes to get a post out. Um, and then, you know, at lunchtime, I knew that was another small break that I had and I didn't have children in my classroom. I was able to send a few messages. I get about 10 out, make a post while eating my lunch. And then I go down to athletics and then I wouldn't be able to really check my phone too much until pretty much bedtime my son's bedtime. And then I spent about an hour in the evening, maybe a little bit more TV time with my husband was me sitting there with him, but I was on my phone working. He didn't, I asked him, I was like, does it matter to you? We had full conversation, but he's like, you have goals. Like we're good. I'm, I'm right. We're right here. Okay. I'm going to, I'm not going to ignore you, but he allowed me to be on my phone. Like I can either watch TV and waste my time, or I can be watching another small little screen and working, but I'm still with him being present with him. But I was able to plan my day out. And then at the very end of the night, about 10, 10 30, right before we went to bed, I would, I would type out some posts. I'd maybe type out like a morning post. So then in the morning, I didn't have to think about it. That whole two minutes sitting in my car before I walked in, boom, copy, paste, boom, there you go. I can walk into the door. So just your day shouldn't surprise you. So the whole balance thing and, and overwhelm and feeling like you have too much on your plate, you may need to take some stuff off of your plate, understand that you have the weekend, understand you may just need to spread it out. But a lot of our issue is just, we aren't very good planners when it comes to our next day. So as soon as you plan it out and you sit down and you're intentional with that time, you will be able to get so much done in a short amount of time that then you will not have the guilt of I didn't work my business or I'm working my business when I should be with my kids or, you know, whatever. So it's, it's just a matter of tomorrow shouldn't surprise you. So you should be able to have that planned out with what you're going to do so you can be successful. That's so good. Um, I, I know someone says like, you got to run the day or the day runs you. Like you either choose to take charge of your day or you are just responding to all of the things that are hitting you throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, and y'all staying up for literally five, 10 minutes at night and going to some pages of people you like to follow, screenshotting some ideas or copying their captions and texting them to yourself. 
so that you have a little arsenal so that when you are running on, low on time but you've got a couple minutes to make a post and you're just so flustered you can't come up with words, go look through there. Find, you know, find some words that verbiage that you've saved or save it to a collection on Facebook so you can go pull from it and then just tweak it, make it your own, add your own photo and go. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, not always having 100% original content. Like I still, I have, this is my full-time job and I still often use inspiration from what other people have posted. So for me, I always feel much better when I plan a post before I go to bed, like she said, and I wake up and I have a post from the get-go before I even have any caffeine in my system because if I don't do that, sometimes I'll get, you know, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll, and I'll look up and it'll be noon and I'm like, oh, I didn't post. And then I already feel behind. So um, there's just something to be said for like getting started right from the beginning, doing something for your business or something personal development right at the beginning of your day. So um, I liked this question. So what's the one tip or hint you would tell your beginner self if you could go back right, back right now and talk to her? Let's say like that first year, if there's something you could go back and tell yourself. Ooh, that one's a tough one. <laughs> um, I would say, and this is my personality. So I start, I'm a very green and red 50-50, very little yellow, very little blue. Um, I have more yellow now, but at the time, it, I was very red and very green. And um, I started the business, it was all work, 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 hard, hard, hard. All you need to do is just message, 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 post, 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 message, post. That's what it takes to be successful. And um, if I could go back in time and go back to that leader, Val, I would tell her, hey, some of these ladies are mentally struggling right now and you need to take care of them. And I didn't, I didn't have that capacity. It took me a while. Like the leader I am now compared to the leader, then I want to go back to my old team and my team, my, when I first went double diamond and apologize to all of them and say, I'm so sorry. I am a much better leader now. I could have taught you so many different things, but then I didn't even know it. I, I hadn't expanded my own confidence. I hadn't expanded my own mindset, um, my, my whole like manifesting your thoughts and all of that stuff. I hadn't developed any of that yet. And so if I could go back, I would say start developing it now when you first got started because I feel like if that, I know that if I had done that at the at the beginning, it wouldn't have taken me two years to go from double to triple. I could have made that jump so much sooner, but I had a small money thermostat. Pam always talks about her money thermostat. And if you want to make the bigger bucks, you have to slowly increase your money thermostat. I didn't do that. I was comfortable at, at double diamond pay. Triple diamond pay scared me. And some of you guys, I don't know what ranks you guys are, but you know, if you're pushing for diamond or if double diamond uh, money scares you or triple diamond money scares you, it's probably because your money mindset's way down here. And so you've got to work on exercising that to bring it up higher to where you're not scared to receive more blessings and more abundance. And so if I could go back to old Valerie, it would say, stop thinking you know everything right now because you don't. Listen to the people who are telling you personal development's important. Stop being so stubborn and just listen because it's going to make you so much better. You're going to be so much more powerful. And, and I think I would have done everything. I probably could have gone triple sooner, gone presidential sooner had I worked on my own personal growth. And it wasn't just all hustle, 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 work, 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 hustle, hustle, work, work. Personal development would definitely be mine because when you're hustling and you're in the grind and things are going well and you're excited, you don't feel like you're missing anything mm -hmm. until you are, <laughs> until you're like, I don't understand what's going on. And then you're late. <laughs> you need mm -hmm. it before you run out. You need to yes. fill your cup before it's empty. You don't want to be filling an empty cup. Mm -hmm. um, that was so good. I'm, I wanted to ask you, I mean, and I think some of the girls on here will want to know, but do you have any tips for increasing your money thermostat? Like what are some things that people that are tangible things that people could do to help that? So the biggest thing that helped me was an audible book. So if you like to read, please go get a regular paperback book. But as for as green and as nerdy as I am teaching chemistry and science and stuff, you would think that I like books, but I don't, <laughs> I don't like reading. I go to sleep whenever I read, but audible 
is my jam. And so when Amber Parker introduced me to Audible, and it totally changed my life. And so I remember um, packing up our house, moving to San Antonio, because I've only been here for about a year and a half. Um, I was packing the house up, listening to um, You Are a Badass at Making Money. And so I listened to the original book, but this one was about making money and it totally changed how I looked at money. I had money guilt. Um, I really struggled with uh, why do I need more? That made me feel selfish. That made me feel greedy that I wanted more. And even though she's real brash and it's not a Christian based book, she talks about the universe. I just ignored that. And I just put in God, like it, because that's who I am. And so it didn't bother me that she would talk about the universe. I was like, it's not the universe. It's God. I'll just substitute that in. And so when I started putting his name in and realizing that, you know, God really does want us to have abundance. Like, does he want it? Money isn't bad. It's, it's the greedy people, like it's the person who makes money bad. And so God wants to bless his people because if his, if his people, if his children have the money, then we can use it to grow his kingdom. He wants like, I don't want to use good and bad, but if he gives it to the good people, his children, like, isn't that so much more rewarding than letting someone like we get to choose what our money does. And so that was a big thing for me. That book really was probably one of the biggest things. Um, but even more so it was that, and then pouring into like, just look up verses on abundance, look up and just type in Google abundance verses, and you will find verses where he wants to bless you. It's just like how I want to spoil my children and give them everything they want. He wants to do that. To, he wants to give us everything. He wants to spoil us with everything. Just, we are the stubborn ones who want to, if it's like a GPS route, we're the ones that go this way. And it, he's trying to say rerouting, rerouting, bring us back here. But we're like, no, 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 we need to go this way. And he's like, no, you need to go this way. Like you're literally two blocks away from your abundance. Stop being so dang stubborn and go in this way thinking that's the right way. And so that book was a big one, a big one for me. So that one, Happy Money was another good one. It's just a lot of books, just ingesting more and more and more and really filling to, to the point where you have no, no other room in your brain, but to like, there's no room left for the doubt and the fear and all of that stuff. So that's good. Um, I haven't heard of happy money. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, that made me think of Pam's analogy. You probably saw the video that she did on the leadership page about the fly on the window. Yes. It's like uh -huh. you're so close to getting to the outside air, but you just keep going the wrong direction into the window. Like, why do we mm -hmm. do that? Um, Okay, so let's see here. Um, you kind of just went over some um, your go-to personal developments. I guess that was more on money. Do you have any other like audiobooks or um, mm -hmm. most of the people on here are going to be newer to pushing for like Ruby. A couple of these girls are going Ruby. Yeah, that's about, about newbie to Ruby on here. So okay. do you have any personal development books? Uh -huh. Um, I, I consume all of my personal development through, um, listening. And so I use the audible app. So I pay like, I think it's $12 a month and you get a credit. And so I can get a book a month. Um, and I go on podcast kicks. And so podcast is really where I spend a lot of my time. Um, I listen to, uh, the elevation church podcast. Um, those sermons are fairly, are pretty lengthy. They're like 45 minutes. So if you live in a bigger city like me and it takes 30 minutes to drive somewhere, you can get through them really, really fast. So I listen to everything in my car. Um, so elevation church, uh, that for, that's for me, that's for filling my cup. I always start my day off with a devotional. So it's either that or the Big Life devotional podcast. Um, and hers are really, really short. She does one every day and they're like 15 minutes. She has a great Southern accent. I love her. So high energy. But those type of podcasts, I always fill my cup up with Jesus and with the word and with the truth first. And that's all for me. Um, I share it with my team whenever I feel inspired, but that's all for me and my heart and my spirit. After I fill my cup up for myself, then I do more and I do that for my team. And that was something that I struggled with. And that's something that Brittany Hayes taught me. Um, I did personal development. So once I finally bought into personal development, I would do enough, but I would still feel drained at the end of the day. Um, I still would feel aggravated, like oh, more questions or, you know, like I just, I would, oh, there's another text message. I just, I'm getting tired of my phone. I'm getting frustrated. And that was a, that was a lack of 
of, that was my cup being empty. I didn't have any more to give. So even though I was doing personal development, I was doing bare minimum. I wasn't doing enough. And she taught me that I, that she does self-development all day long and she does enough for herself and enough to pour into her team and to pour into her business, essentially using that energy to transform into her business. And she said, so by the end of the day, whenever you lay your head down at night, you should still feel full. You should still feel like fulfilled because you did so much development, so much putting into your cup. And that was just a light bulb because I was doing self-development, but I still was so exhausted. And so I stepped up my self-development game and I literally, I, I, I self-develop all day long. It's very, very rare that I even have my radio on in my car. The only time I have it on is when my husband gets in the car. And that's just because he's like, really, you have your podcast on? I'm like, yeah, you need to get on this train and start listening to it. It's on all day long. I have my AirPods. So, I mean, I stay at home. So I'm doing laundry. I'm listening. I am you know, doing dishes. I'm listening. I'm making the bed. I'm listening. I rarely don't have these in. I look like the not the millennials, but like the Gen X kids, like the 16 year old kids walking around the mall with the AirPod. That's me. But I'm listening to uh, the Big Life Devotional podcast, Elevation Church podcast. Um, there's a real good one. It's called the Angie Lee Show. Um, she she's a little explicit, so don't listen to that one in the speakers with with your kids. Um, but she's real good at marketing tips and like social media and Instagram. Um, so that one's more of a business type. But I just love her personality. She's very real. Um, and then audible books, I could give you like, I can just screenshot you a whole bunch, but the biggest one that changed my life, um, is called sun stand still. Um, and so sun, like the sun in the sky. And that one's by Stephen Furtick. Um, that one truly changed how I looked at my business, how I looked at my prayers and really made me realize how small I had been dreaming. Um, it's about, uh, praying audaciously and praying for big impossible things. Uh, prayers uh, and really truly having you open your mind to that we serve a God who can move mountains and split the waters and raise people from the dead. If he can do all of those impossible things, then goodness sake, he can help me go diamond or he can help me go triple or he can help me go ambassador. Like I'm, I serve, and there's a quote, let me see if I can remember it, where uh, if, if your dreams don't scare you, then chances are they are insulting to God. Like basically if you have a goal where it's not intimidating to you, like I want to go Ruby and you're like this close to going Ruby, then you are saying, I can only do this with my own power. I'm not using God's power with this because if you're using God's power, God's power can do impossible things. So stop dreaming small and stop selling God short of his power where he's saying, you want Ruby girlfriend? I have triple diamond ready for you on the plate, ready to go. You just got to ask and you just got to believe that I can do it. Not you can do it, but I can do it. And that book totally changed my life. There's other ones that he's done, but that one is a good one. Like I've listened to it twice. It's so good. I remember you talking to me about that. And when you came to Houston for that event, I think you had mm -hmm. just gone presidential maybe. And you said I'm that was, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I was like, yeah, you were about to go. That's right. Um, but you were telling me just how powerful that had been for you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, but I do want to, let me see, where is that question? Um, okay, so what do your non-negotiables look like? Um, maybe let's, um, like, kind of, do you have a six list? How do you, like, run your day, basically? I know it's different now because you're at home, but, like, what are your must-dos? Um, I do have the six list. Um, I prioritize them in messaging is my number one. I, I have a weekly goal that I message. I don't do a daily goal. I do a weekly goal. And I feel like that works for me really well because um, if I have a bad day, if a kid gets sick or if one of them's super fussy or she's not taking a nap or whatever can throw my routine off and then it, and then I won't hit my goal. And then I feel like I, I start feeling guilty. And so I have a weekly goal of a hundred to 150 a week. And so that averages out to, if I work Monday through Friday, that's about 20 to 25 a day, Monday through Friday, that's me skipping weekends. Um, and so if you add in the weekends, that's even less, but that's over, that's almost 500 messages a month. 
once you start doing the math. And that's a lot of touches. Um, and it's not an impossible number to do every single day. So I have a weekly goal. I break it down every day into a certain amount, but there are some days that you just get on fire and you're like, you look up and you're like, Oh, I sent 50 today. There are some days you look up and you feel like you sent 50 and you sent 20 or 10. You have both of those days. And so it allows me grace. So if I have a rough day or I have one of those days that just, I have a lot on my plate, I know that I made up for it maybe two days ago when I sent 60 in one sitting. So today, if I only got to 10 or 20, it's okay because I'm trying to hit a weekly goal instead of just a daily goal. So it helps me with that daily guilt of, of not working my business or feeling like a, like a failure for a day. So that's my main goal. Um, I do, I'm on social media all the time. And so I, Instagram is a one post a day. Sometimes I skip and it's one of those days, like what Alyssa said, if I skip, it's probably because I didn't plan very well. Um, Facebook is about three to four ish, two to four ish posts a day, but then stories is where it's at. I'm in my stories every day, like 10, 15 slides, especially with TikTok now. It's like, it's just all, I just all, it's all I put in there. Um, and now I've added TikTok to my, to my repertoire and that's super fun. Um, so I have my, my posting and my stories all on. So I don't skip a day. Even if I'm, even if I'm on vacation, I don't skip a day. You will see me on social media every single day. Um, so those are my two main things. And then of course you have your adding friends and I will be honest, I don't have a specific number and I probably should with how many I want to add per week. And so that's on me and I'm just being real and being open and honest, letting you guys know that I'm not perfect. Um, interacting is another one. I do my best to not just scroll. If I find myself scrolling through Instagram, I either say, Valerie, you need to start adding and engaging, or you need to put your phone down and go be productive somewhere else. So I'm really working on the scrolling, even on TikTok, scrolling and intentionally either hearting it or following them or doing something instead of just wasting my time. I need to be productive. Um, and then host a post uh, with the giveaways. Uh, trying to get at least five up a day. So, but once again, I try to do more of an average because sometimes I have really hot days and then really cold days. So I should look at it more of an average for a week of like 20 a week um, versus like per day. So that way I can give myself grace on days that maybe I don't have a great day. Um, but that, those are my non-negotiables, but messaging is always my number one. Like I don't, I don't skip it. I don't skip it. Usually messaging is at the bottom of people's lists and they rather add people and like engage and like, no, I need to flip it. You need to flip it and get more touches because yes, you're going to en enrolling people. You have to touch them at least, you know, average five to seven times, you know, to expose them in order for them to sign up. And so you're skipping an exposure if you don't message and reach out. So that's always when I sit down to work, that's the first thing that I do is I message. Everything else is secondary for me. That's really good advice because a lot of days what happens is people put it at the bottom of the list. And they get about halfway through the list and then they get busy with their kids or whatever and happens and they never get to that part of the list. And then the next day they start the same way and then they look up and three, four, two weeks have gone by and they haven't sent any messages. And that's a part of our job. And I've been telling people like this week, I'm like, if all you do is message for the next week, that would be okay with me. Like, because mm -hmm. that is the most important thing you can do right now, especially leading into conference, because even if they don't respond or even if it's a no, or even if it's maybe later or whatever, the seed is planted before all of the craziness that is about to happen at conference. You don't want to, if you're waiting for the conference announcements or whatever to plant the seed, you're, you're waiting too long. It's late. It's too late. Uh -huh. yeah. And someone else is going to message them or has messaged them first. Exactly. So I would, cause I see a question in the, or I, it just says including follow up. So actually what I've been doing this week because of conference, I have been going through my leads list from 2019 and moving them over to a new journal. And as I'm doing that, I'm doing a new touch with them, even though they may not be responding right away. I mean, I may not have contacted them in months, but I'm touching them right now because some of them are coming back alive. So then I can hit them up again when we have a conference announcement, whatever it is, if it's exciting enough for me to go to them and it's relevant to them, I, I, I touched in with them. Like they saw my face pop up. So I'm not like, 
coming out of the cold from six months ago. It's like, oh, Valerie thought of me just a couple of weeks ago, and now here she is messaging me again. So when, I don't know if you're asking, do I include follow-up in my messaging? I do, but I do, I am very um, aware of making sure I'm not doing all follow-up, and I also have new touches. So I want to make sure I'm creating new leads um, throughout the throughout the week also. So I, th that's more, I don't have like a number like of what, like what my goal is, but I just know I am intentional with, yes, I have follow-up, but if I did 50 follow-up, I also know, hey, I need to send out some new messages today also. So that's just more like an internal like counter that I have. I don't have a number that I set for that. I'm going to ask one last little question um, and then we'll let you go. But how do you choose who to message? How do you find people to message when you, I'm assuming most of the people you're messaging are about the business or do you do business and products? I do 99% distributor. Um, I offer it to everyone. I try not to prejudge people. I try not to prejudge, prejudge them on friends or how they look or whatever, because if you go look at the top leaders, you have young people, you have old people, you have every age in between, every hair color, every, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And so I do not want to skip someone and potentially change their life. Like I look at this as a calling, like this is a purpose in my life to, to tra transform somebody's business. And who dare am I to, to say, oh no, she's not worthy of, of a distributor message. So I just don't, I don't play that game. I let them decide. Uh, the only time, the only time I don't is if I open up their profile and I see just derogatory profanity, just things that I don't, I don't want to relate to. I don't want the It Works brand on. Those people I usually tend to just unfollow. Like if they're not going to be a part of my circle, like in real life, I, I just, I just don't because I still have that moral compass. Like I still have to have that in me, but if they just look like a good, decent person, I don't care what you look like, you're getting a distributor message from me. Um, and then if they say no to that, then I'll switch to loyal and say, I know this isn't for everyone. You know, then I can go the loyal route. Would you just maybe want to try the products out? Zero pressure to sell. I usually get a yes there and then I can send them a product list. But if I get a no there, then I can at least go post to post at the very end. So I go distributor, loyal, post to post. That's my order. And I almost never message loyal until it's promotion season. And it's that month where it's like, it's, this is the month and it's happening. Then I scrap all those rules and everybody gets a loyal customer message from me. Cause that's what I need. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I know how that goes. Like I will message anyone to place an order at that point, but, um, that was such good advice. I appreciate that. I appreciate you being on here. I know all these girls did. I know it was a small group, so we really appreciate you taking the time to just You're share welcome. all the goodness with them. Um, I know that you probably have a new, a few new Instagram or Facebook followers. Um, yeah, go follow. I'm <laughs> and go listen to her podcast. Um, that sounded weird. Podcast. I can't talk. That's why I don't have a podcast. So good for you. Um, <laughs> but we appreciate you so much for being on here and um, so excited to watch you crush all your goals this year and now you have a whole new group to cheer you on yeah I want to cheer all of these ladies on I want to see a new wave of people come into our top circle like oh yeah hang out with all of you guys at, at diamond weekend like that's gonna be so much fun so oh, yeah. this is where I make friends I don't make friends naturally but I'll make same. friends at diamond weekend <laughs> <laughs> same same <laughs> all right thank you guys for jumping on thanks Val we'll see you guys okay. later bye